that one piece of uh, uh, one map you show there with the um, the blank map with the housing previous councils go back 15 20 years we were looking at the potential of development and we were looking at a piece of paper with some spaces on it that we would hope that we would eventually fill in we never ever looked at people's backyards they weren't there so I, you know, I'm listening to this young fellow here I know quite well, this gentleman here, these people here, the residents of your community, they're providing you with some suggestions. Uh, I like what Gerald said, you don't do something with Court Riel, you know, you're sending traffic to a dead end area. And if you look, I'm thinking if you go back about 10 years, I'm gone seven years off council. We did a land use study. My recollection is that um, Court Riel, the right side, we didn't call it light industrial, it was warehousing only. The left side, from my recollection, no development in that area. Public Works Canada was working Yeah, well we had, there was, it was designated as a, a no developed area. We looked at um, somewhere in that land use study, there's two areas designated as industrial. I think one is further down, maybe going down towards the, uh, the Adams Loop area, and one up, I'll say, where um, the tank farm was. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, I think you've got some suggestions here that you can work with. And the idea of the 30 meter buffer that's just a number on a piece of paper, and I think if the will is with council, then you can work with your citizens and make that 30, uh, 30 uh, a 60 or a whatever you want to do with it. But I think the history of why the development is as it is, no road, no trucks coming in, all of a sudden you have these trucks coming in, you have to now find a way to deal with that cargo coming in over the road and where it goes. My two cents. Any other comments or yeah, yeah. the is our property on Fort Real. If anybody ever considered a cross dock facility where the trucks will come in town? Yeah, it's not something the town would be developing. But you can enforce it. Yeah. Right? It's done in cities. Oh well, I know. And there's quiet times, right? No yeah. trucks between here and here. I totally agree. What? I, I totally agree with you. The difficulty is enforcing them. People come to all hours of the night and I'm not you know, like, officer, he, have one? I mean, and people living on Fort on Fort Rio probably hear traffic track uh, truck traffic yeah. three and four o'clock in the morning. So yeah. Greg Wheeler live on fourteen loyal. Um, I don't have a problem with the road one. Yes, it's trucks got to go somewhere. They got to get down to the place, warehouses, whatever. They got to go somewhere. The 30 meters, I don't think that's enough. As Jamie said, I've, I've lived back enough for 10 years. There's no, there's no trees there. There's nothing any bigger than three inches around, so that's not a tree. The other little problem I got, you're, you're saying this has been planned for 20 years. Uh, you've got counselors that have already admitted that they didn't know what measurements were, were here. What distance are there? There have been no studies done on uh, vehicle traffic. And I, I really don't understand why only the first eight ounces are affected. The sand doesn't stop after eight ounces. The sand ends up in my backyard, in my pool, on my lawn. A good wind storm, the wind comes from Danny's place, right down the back, right to my house. More than more than thirty meters is needed here. I think. I'm just going to clarify, Greg. Yeah, I wasn't on the council for twenty years, and the road that is proposed here, um, there's many different options. We even talked about going right down to Mud Lake Road. road. Yeah. So this close, like to see it now on the map, 
I've heard 30 meter buffers and I've heard different numbers, but to actually see it, like a couple months ago or whenever it was I seen it, I didn't realize it until I guess you get an actual visual of how really close it was. There's so many options we've heard since I've been on council, the previous council on this one, and the money is only getting finalized now and really putting this together. CBCL just brought it back to us not long ago. So, you know, I think it's a fair statement for me to say that as a counselor, I didn't really realize how close it was till recently because I don't sit on the development planning committee. We have three counselors that sit on that committee and unless all that information is brought back to the rest of council, then we don't, we don't, we're, we, we don't really see it or discuss it as a council a whole until they finalize it and bring it to the committee in the whole. And further to that, uh, Jackie, um, we stood here at this map and when we, when we uh, I don't know if I'll use the word debated, uh, about this road. And, you know, I was, I was actually pretty adamant that, that we consult with everybody because it was, it was a very contentious issue and I was adamant that that what was being proposed or what the plan was wasn't sufficient for the people on that area so you know the whole idea of consulting with the residents in your community is so that we can make the community better so I appreciate the fact that you guys came out tonight to basically reiterate exactly where I stood about five or six weeks ago on this issue and Jamie I mean I, I, I think I, I probably mentioned to you about the town plan and about the emphasis being on the green areas mm -hmm. and trying we're in Lake Melville we're not we're not in downtown St. John's where we got no land to be dealing with and, be, and to be talking about so you know there, there's lots of land back there and, and how these options are discussed is going to allow us on that committee to move forward and I think it's, uh, I think it's really important that you guys came out and had your say. See, I guess I'm affected both ways. I'm uh, affected as a resident on, on the corner of Lyle. But uh, if I, right now, we're dealing with complaints from Port Rio. If we're going to put another road in, we're going to deal with complaints from Lyle, I'd just as soon deal with the ones from Port Rio. If uh, we're going to satisfy Michelle and make Jamie unhappy, as a business owner, that doesn't do anything for me. Let's make everyone happy. Move it back where you want it. Tell CBCL, this is what we want. This is what we're paying you to do. Give us what we want and let the council deal with the... Uh, I, I don't think there's anybody on council that wouldn't agree with you, Gerald, in putting the road back as far as we could. Because I think that would be in the best interest of everyone. But it, comes to a point where you, you're, you're given a specific budget, you have to try and live within that. And, uh, you know, I think we've all been in those situations. And I, I, I believe that if there's a way that we can satisfy everybody, we will. I mean, I really do believe I'd that. like to know why that turn that's in uh, Kellen Drive ended up turning in. Yeah, it's almost like where it is. He ran into Andy's driveway. Yeah. And, I, and I can't and answer that. that was, but that's what's creating the problem. That was a yeah. part of another subdivision that was done. So you go back, you go back the road uh, uh, two or three hundred kilometers, or two or three hundred uh, meters. <laughs> be far enough. Yeah, two or three hundred <laughs> meters. Take a bit of a left turn, and I don't think you'll have anybody unhappy. Here. No, I, I, I totally agree with you. <clears throat> uh, I'm Jamie Felsberg, another Jamie that lives on Lyle. Um, mine are not directly impacting the people in Lyle or maybe majority of the residential community, but it's just something that I think should also be considered since all of Kellen Drive is being repaved and reconstructed for traffic to come down it. If there are going to be tractor trailers or heavy duty traffic coming off of the highway, taking a direct left turn up the hill, that may be something that I know a little drop in the bucket, but every drop counts. Tractor trailer drivers, bigger truck drivers may have an issue doing that sometimes throughout the year and they may re resort to other routes. Maybe that might be down towards the intersection at the college up to Kellen Drive again, but that's just something I think should be taken into consideration. But my bigger point is if this road is going to go through with a 30 meter, 60 meter, whatever buffer in it, it's going through fine. 
but the construction that is on Court Real Road with the warehousing and stuff like that, is there going to be something in place now that it's a light duty traffic area sort of deal? Is there going to be something in place in the next 10, 20, 30 years that makes sure that it's not 50 warehouses up there and more tractor trailer are gonna go through since this is now there? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think anybody can answer that question, what's gonna happen 20, 30 years from now in terms of what's up there. Yeah. But, but right now, there's a limited amount of land that, that I don't even know if there's any land available there right now. I don't think there's any crown land available and what's, what has been taken has been taken. So any further development up there would fairly be restricted. And Mr. Abbas, to the fact, one side of the road is not for development whatsoever. So, and we've had numerous applications from people in the last number of years that have been wanting to extend properties up there, and, and, and they've never gotten through. So, wouldn't you guys know what's going to happen up there? About in 30 years? Time, aren't you in <laughs> He's asking if uh, councillors would know what's going to happen up there in the next 20 years if they're in charge of what can happen up there in the next 20 years. I can't. can't include what will happen in 30 years and that's um, I'm not speculating on anything. No, of course. I'm just yeah. wondering if there would be something in place to not encourage more heavy traffic to take this road so that it becomes more of a um, route for it to happen more. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, I'll go, and I'll go right back to our 10-year plan which which had uh, an enormous amount of consultations and, and you know both public and and you know within government and I mean the document is very extensive um, and I encourage everybody to to look at it but it, it is a result of, of a lot of work and it is a 10-year plan it's not a 20-year plan or a 30-year plan but you know it is it is a very good yeah, plan. And, and there's no intention of, of zoning that industrial whatsoever <coughs> it's not encouraged. my final question is regarding Helen Drive uh, and the repaving section. This money allocated four million, six million, what not, is that including the repaving of the sections of Kellen Drive, such as in front of the Nanaspa building, the Tuba building? Oh yes. Where the yeah, okay. <coughs> okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. That was my final question. <coughs> Hi, my name is Jim Saunders. I uh, own a property at 42 Lyle Street. Um, I'm going to be one of the properties affected with the 30 meter buffer. One of the eight properties. Um, I'm okay with the, the road, but I think they do need a, a wider buffer. And a question that you've been wondering the answer to about uh, why was it ever rerouted down to Hepler? I, uh, I inquired about that a few years ago, actually, through a different municipal technologist. And that person told me then that it was a money issue and they rerouted. Uh, Kellen Drive it tied it in after because it was because of the cost involved at the time and yeah. they just weren't in a position to you know, run I believe that down. was part of that. <coughs> that that's that what that the municipal was. top municipal technologist at the time told me. It was a few years ago, but that's what I was told at the time, right? Mm -hmm. Got, actually, I saw the map on the wall in the uh, technologist office at that time. She showed it to me, the woman who was doing the job at the time, right? And that extended the Kellen to Kellen yeah, she, she yeah. said, Yeah, she showed it to me and we discussed it briefly. It was only a one-time conversation, but that's that's what I was told at that time. It made sense looking at the map at the time, right? Um, and as far as the road, when you do build it, um, yes, it needs to be built to a proper standard. It will be. Because otherwise the asphalt will break down, and that's what makes the noise. Randy can speak to that in terms of the road itself. No, exactly, and that's why we're doing the recap on the paved Are you portion. rebuilding that, though? Are you, are you, you you're digging up the road and rebuilding it, or are you just recapping it? Recapping from uh, uh, Nile Street up, up as far as what was done the last time. The, the yeah, new section sure. that was done by... Because that section we were in front of, uh, I guess, the sign shop where it ends? Yeah. From there up, it's, it's actually been oh, dug right. up and, you know, a, a road bed put in there. Yeah. But from, yeah. from there down, there's no road bed. Right? So you need a road bed. Yeah. I, I know that, right? Yeah. I'm not an engineer, but I do know that. Yeah. No, right, and, right. And, and the new section that you had done the other year, it seems to be holding up quite well. Yeah. yeah. Because there was a road bed put in there. Right. It'll all be reconstructed, dug up. And proper granulars, and that keeps the that keeps the noise down as well. The traffic, you know, as you drive in on John Hill Drive, I lived in on John Hill Drive as well, and the road in there is horrible. But that's because it was built without a road bed. It was pavement put down on top of two inches of gravel, right? And now you go in there and it's bang, 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 every 150, 200 feet. This and is that's reason why. Yeah, I'll give you an example. Up in up in so Spruce to Park, to when the roads were built in 1940s and 50s, they were built right. I, I've done. I've been on water breaks up there. There's a uh, about a foot and a half of what they call class B pit run, 
and another six, eight inches of Class A on top of that, and there's not a crack in the road up there. And the Hamilton Heights, the original area of Hamilton Heights, the roads up there are, are good as well, right? The, the, new, the, the valley is, is completely different, the roads break down because there's, there's no road bed on the most of it, right? So, yeah, but anyways, I just wanted to you know, mention that, but I'm, you know, I'm okay with the road, but I would like to have a, a little buffer. <laughs> You yeah. know, anywhere's up to 60 meters would be great, right? And uh, and it just needs to be, if, if the road breaks down, it's going to get noisy no matter what. And the speed, you know, they need to keep the speed down and some enforcement to keep the, uh, the tractor trailers traveling on high speed. They're noisy on the road, right? Tire noise, right? But anyways, thank you. I got two issues. <clears throat> One is a follow-up from what Jamie was saying about uh, taking measures to not encourage development. I would hope that's not the plan because uh, it's no, it's no light industrial. And yeah, we're not going to encourage industrial. Uh, there. I'm the owner of a lot of property in there. I know you're not going to approve something that's industrial. But as long as it fits the criteria that's there now. Yeah, there's no there's no changes to what's there. Drill proposed, yeah. none whatsoever. No, because if, some, if somebody no. comes to reduce it and say you can't do this. Yeah. Uh, I if it's in the zoning, you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing is, I think most of us are aware of the flooding issue we had uh, up on uh, Pottle and uh, Mitchell this year because of the, the drainage. drainage now, is this new road that's going in there going to help improve that? Or is it going to affect because it, there is a problem there? I'm not an engineer, but I, I'll leave that to Randy to, uh, he does. Yeah, what, just, he what he did last year was just a quick fix, right? Yeah. We we uh, we recognize that, and actually that's part of. We also had money approved under a separate separate project, uh, fifty five thousand dollars to look at storm drainage improvements in the town, and that was one of the high priorities for the consultant to look at that. As I've been surveyed, and he's done his profile, and he's come back with a recommendation to properly ditch that and and, and slope it and so on. Okay, no, just the concern was that by putting a new building, <coughs> uh, yeah. that we wanted to make sure we wasn't going to. Create another problem. No, last year it was just a stopgap measure. It, it worked last year, but the thing was from here on to make it uh, make it work, maintain it. It was never maintained before. It was out of sight, out of mind. It didn't cause a problem. But now that we have it, we know we have it. We'll keep it. We'll have it properly constructed and maintained on a yearly basis. There is monitoring wells in for that, isn't there? Uh, I don't think there was any monitoring wells put in. We put in monitoring wells in other areas in the town for some other uh, uh, Salino-based uh, storm systems. Yeah. <clears throat> be my last comment, I promise. I want to say thank you to the councillors who actually decided to send notices to the people that were affected so that we could actually get people together and bring this forward so it can be part of a consultative process because I think without that this likely would have been a construction ongoing and we would have been not able to have any say in that so I appreciate it. But I think what we're saying here tonight, part of what you're talking about about the road is making sure that the construction is done right and everything else so that it is a proper road and it's properly used but I think the same goes for the area and the usage so if budgetary constraints are a problem then either you do it right or you don't do it at all. And if you can't do it right, why bother doing it, creating more issues, and it's going to create problems down the road. So I think that your, your comment about budget is right, but I think it applies to everything across the board. So if you don't have the budget to do it properly, then I think that you either cut back on what you're doing, or you do part of it, or you make a decision, but don't do it in a way that creates more issues down the road, as has done, by creating a quick fix, as Mr. Saunders said, into our area before. Yeah. So that's all I'd say is don't let the budget be the determining factor. No, no, thank you and appreciate those comments. Anybody else? Okay. Well, I just want to say uh, thank you for everybody coming out and I certainly heard you tonight. We were elected by the people and uh, uh, I'd I'd much rather leave here tonight and come up with a solution to work with everybody than walk away and say, no, we're not doing that. So that's what I, I'm hoping you can read between the lines and see where I'm thinking too. That, you know, whatever works for you guys, I'm willing to work with you as a counselor to make it work. <laughs> uh, just uh, another couple of questions here. Uh, one, the, you've got this map up for zoning. 
can somebody explain the colors that I'm seeing here and what they're for for future? That's records? Courtney's. <laughs> um, I just brought it up because there was the questions about like the future um, development and how we're going to be controlling how like the urban sprawl will be happening and like controlling the industrial uses in that area. And so uh, this is our current zoning is light, light industrial. And then I also have our proposed zoning for our new 10 year plan that's coming uh, out hopefully at the end of this year. And so that just shows that this is the same zoning for that area where um, those uh, businesses are up on Port Real. And so um, like right now, this whole zone out here, like where the proposed uh, extension is, is rural. And um, so then, and then like that's residential <coughs> low density where uh, like the John Hill area is. And, uh, that hasn't really, this is development scheme area, so this has been one of the areas that's been identified by our consultants that can be potentially developed in the future. And so that is kind of like an overarching zone where um, someone who's going to develop that area would, would give a comprehensive plan for development to the town to be approved. And so like, so if they're going to put in a subdivision or something like that, they'd come to the town with uh, like a comprehensive plan for that area or like it's going to be industrial or something and then the zoning would fall in after that but it would have to be approved by the town okay so whatever goes <laughs> after industrial residential or whatever it has to be approved by town oh, yeah. but if for that brown area that's, brown the, area. The that's correct area. that's behind mile and the proposed, <coughs> proposed road is going right. right so if for future reference if the town whoever the council may be at the time uh, has to vote on what goes at residential or industrial. Shouldn't you as a council now be already thinking about this road, where it's going, and how it's going to affect any future development that's there, be it residential or industrial? Yes. <coughs> where you place that road now, in 30 years, that road's still going to be there. Right? Same as Cullen Drive when it was built initially. Initially, yes. And there were a lot of concerns back then, whatever you call And obviously, there's, there's always going to be concerns in this town whenever you put stuff somewhere. Because everybody knows it's as it's Labrador. Everybody likes their outdoors, their back. Yeah. But uh, we also got to realize we're living here. We're paying all the town taxes. We got to work together here. Um, and if we're looking at where to place that road and we're you know, we're talking about how far back there's a natural buffer right along the edge of that hill. Uh, that hill actually runs right off the, the right from Danny's spot there. It's right on top corner of the hill, runs out around and, and down to Court Reef. Yeah. Right? You put a road out there on top of that, you still got room inside for some residential in the future. <coughs> Uh, I'll be small, but you make a small neighborhood, right? There's lots of places around Newfoundland, St. John's, wherever you go, you get smaller, uh, smaller uh, neighborhoods. What's wrong with that? You just run the road in a different way. But there's a natural hill that's back there. You, you can see the fire break right straight across, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. But you keep the road up of, out of what you considered last year was the floodplain that's down on that mm -hmm. fire break. But that road, that hill, uh, you know, again, toward, with Danny, you still have to build it back far enough in the beginning to get back to the back of that hill. Right on the turn. Mm -hmm. well, the difference in you and Danny Jamie. Daddy? <laughs> <laughs> Um, as a resident on McLean Street, I frequent those trails every single day. And I just want to say that I certainly won't be walking the walking trail if it's next to tractor trailers driving by me and fences. And um, to me, that's not an appealing walking trail. That's not, that's not appealing. But I, I do walk that every single day. And I will not be frequenting those walking trails with tractor trailers driving by. Sorry, I'm a little bit taller than you. <laughs> Not much. Uh, hi, I'm Marlene. I'm a resident on Lyle Street. So I just have a, it kind of takes me a little while to process stuff. 
So I'm kind of sitting back listening. Uh, first of all, thank you to the council for having this consultation. Uh, I think by the numbers that you see here, I think you can agree that it's definitely an issue that residents want to talk about. Uh, and I'm sure there's lots of times you guys have consultations and you don't have as many people turn out. So thank you to everybody who took time out of their schedules to come. So I guess I have a couple of, of questions. You had talked about, I don't think anybody's kind of in disagreement of the road. I think everyone thinks the road is kind of a good idea maybe a bit of a bigger buffer. So my, one of my questions is about, around the walking trail. So where is the walking trail? Is it only going to be from like from Heffler to Court Real? Or is it like, or is, are you like, connected to something? Uh, this phase would only go to Court Real from Heffler. The, the intention is to extend it on up. Eventually. This would be like, the first phase. Bigger, bigger yeah, picture. sure, exactly. Okay. Okay, um, also as a resident, I never thought of Mr. Ryan's point of bringing the road to an unpaved Court Real. So I think that's an excellent point. Never thought of that as a resident because it doesn't affect me. So I'm just curious if, in part of the consultation process now, will you find out the cost of paving it from where Court Real ends now to where the proposed exit will be of extension um, as well. Um, so you had said earlier that the, <clears throat> excuse me, the consultant said they would like an answer to <coughs> your, these scenarios by early next week. Are you still sticking with that deadline or, because my concern would be, this obviously is a big issue for residents in that area. So are you gonna say, okay, we're gonna figure this out in like four or five days, go back to the consultant and this is it? Or are you going to go back and say, you know, guys, this is not enough time, we need more time, according to the feedback we have from the residents? Well, the thing about delaying the answer to the consultant is that uh, the, um, the contract may not get called on time, so therefore, it may not start, construction may not get started. And given the uh, short construction season here in, in Happy Valley Goose Bay, it's, uh, it could be issues in, in trying to get the work completed within this construction season. So that's the, that's the challenge in, in, uh, in trying to have this resolved as early as possible. So they'd like to have an answer by late next week, is, is what they told me. So, so they can. Sorry to cut you, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, so they can finalize the design and get it in for all the approvals and, and, and get the tender out. So I was going to say, as a counselor, our next step now is for us to get together immediately and, and have a discussion as a council. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was kind of my next question then, Jackie, was if, you know, I think we're all kind of in agreement tonight that, you know, uh, that. So I guess my, yeah, my next question would be, are you guys going to go back to the consultant in their requested time frame. I understand that they have a time frame, I understand they have a short construction season, but I also don't think that should di dictate what's going to happen in our area. I think, uh, I think, you're, I think we need to remember point. that the consultant works for us. Exactly. Yeah. So anyway, that was just all I said. Thank you. Thank you. And Marnie, just to add the paving, the paving, the intent is to pave the top of Court Real to that intersection. It, it would have to come from a different pot of funds. But okay, yeah. okay, so that would be done at the same time as that, the extension? That, that's, that's, the, that's what we're looking at there. It's under consideration. It's under we're, consideration, we're waiting but to get no... the final estimate. Yeah, we're we have to, we don't know the cost yet. Right? That's right, we don't know the cost. We, we have to uh, that come from the Montier Capital Works funds, and we have to see what other priorities are and to see where it fits. <coughs> but that was discussed, or that's been discussed uh, as well to connect it? Yes, okay. it has been. Okay, thank you. Sorry, uh, so when you go through the process, have your meeting again, will you call another public meeting or consultation again, just to, you know, just to let us know what the new plan is? Sort of like what you well, want to know now? If, yeah, I think if we can get everybody's contact information that are here tonight, the information could be sent out to each one of you individually if yeah, it works. Yeah, because uh, emails like, or whatever. Right? I never, I didn't know. Well, I read it on, online a couple days ago about this meeting. But I'm, I'm one of the eight people. I plan on. I don't have a house there right now, but I do plan on building there. But I never. Some people said that they got notices in the mail from the town about this meeting tonight, but I never received them. Oh, okay. So I'm just. I'll have to be kept in that loop. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Hi, Marina Bassini Brown again. 
Um, just because uh, you'll be meeting very soon on this decision, I wanted to make sure that I <clears throat> also had it on the record before. It was just questions that I was asking. But as a business owner in that light industrial area, um, you know, we bought the property and invested in it with the understanding that we would be able to operate a business and have materials trucked in. So I'm very happy that uh, residents in the area are not against bringing trucks in there somehow. But I, I want to put it on the record that, um, you know, we do not live in that area, so we won't be affected as residents. But we do also think that the extra money, and even if it takes <clears throat> extra time to put in a road that provides a huge green space buffer between the residential area and this transport road, because that's basically what it is, and an alternative route to the Lower Valley, we think that that should be done. Um, it's a win-win situation all around. So it allows the businesses to get the materials they need. It will keep the noise away from the residential area and the dust and so on. But also, a road right in behind those residences would basically cut off access to the green space, especially for children. So children are not going to cross um, a road that has truck traffic on it to go into that green space. And so we have the opportunity, we have the land, we're not in St. John's, let's do it. And I know a little bit about having to wait to raise money for something. And it is worth the wait, and I would encourage council to consider that. Thank you. Coming from the queen of green space herself. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bennett's smiling down there. I don't know what he's thinking. Well, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> he, he was on council on it. <laughs> 20 years ago? Yeah. 20 years ago when this was proposed. Like, <laughs> uh, uh, there's Court Real Road. Like, we're getting ready to move into our home on McLean Street. That's all good and everything is good. And the farther away you can take it, the better the better, but the further up Port Real you goes, the more dust is going to be created. Uh, is there a misconception here about transport truck traffic going into Court Real? There's not very That's much going in there. It's a part of the whole thing. Not it's a, a part, part of the whole thing. The other part of it is to make peace with the people in the lower end of the valley so they don't have to drive through our neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. But, Gerald, me and Gerald, goes up transmitter or Fort Hill Road in the winter time, we gotta stop to let one another pass. You're creating a big problem. The people in the lower end of the valley are not going to use this road in the winter time for two reasons. The road gotta be upgraded before it's paved in, big time. There's hardly enough room there now in the summertime for two vehicles. And uh, is and now when it thaws out She's going to be rough. So what's going to happen, people in the lower end of the valley, I can't speak for them all, but uh, you should also consult them. Are they going to use this road when it's muddy and messy and one lane? And she, she gets rough up there. Mm -hmm. oh, that road, experience. That part would certainly have to be upgraded. She needs to be upgraded. Forget about paving. Mm -hmm. We need an upgrade, big time. So <coughs> I don't think the town is in a position financially to lead people on to say that they may pave that road because paving is not going to be an issue. It needs an upgrade first. And we know almost what that cost through the provincial budgets and stuff like that. Then you gotta pave it. So you know <laughs> transport trucks that comes up there, Carl alluded to it earlier, it might be four or five a week. It's got nothing to, I don't think they got anything to do with heavy equipment. I really don't. Uh, from what I see up there anyway. We get a scattered truck here, a scattered truck there. But the safety issue, safety issue. Now, we got to, you're creating a safety issue for people that are rolling in the valley because you're going to be encouraging them to use this road. There's not going to be fit to be on. Uh, the new road sound all sounds good. Then they're going to get on court <coughs> transmitter or court reel. Up to, the, up to the new intersection. Up to the new that, intersection. That, that, and they're going to say, you know, it's going to go here. So what's going to happen is 
Well, all of those people here, we're going to be replaced by people in the lower end of the valley who you're going to be encouraging to use this road to keep them out of our neighborhoods. This road is, you know, it's a double-edged sword, but it's going to be interesting to see, you know. So, somebody mentioned earlier, oh, just, just chill out a while and just, you know, just do it right. Because we all got to live here. Do I want to road in my backyard? No. Is it going to go there? Probably. Yes. Do I have to go there by Monday? No. <laughs> no. And CBCL, they're pushy. I know that from experience. They're pushy. So just, just call them up Monday right and say, listen here, buddy, chill out. We're not ready. Because we got to think about it. We got to think about a lot more people that's in this room. The people in the lower end of the valley are not concerned that we're here tonight thinking about this road, but they're going to be here. You know, you, you look what you promised us. Look what we got. Did it come down that road? My wife just went off the road, whatever, you know, I mean, you know, you hear the stories, right? It's going to happen. You know, I see it in winter time, spring time. It's, you know, she's rough up there. Well, you're up there almost every day. I'm here every day. So forget about paving. The extra cost that you may put in your, in your budget in the future, you may, you may, lock that out. You've got to upgrade that road. She's, she's bad. She's a bad road. Well, how long is that road? It's not as long as a cow back. It definitely is, right? Is it coming a little bit of the way? I do. <laughs> I do. Yes. That's what we got to deal with up there. Yeah. And the mud, and you know, I mean, it's, 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 she's rough up there. You know? But it's all good. But down where Mr. and Mrs. White lives there on the corner, like there's there's no way it should never be. Like it should like it's gotta be reasonable about what's going on here. You know, it don't even make sense what CBCL is proposing. They're proposing that because they don't live where Mr. and Mrs. White lives. They don't live where we all live. They're in St. John's. You know, they don't they don't care. You know? And I know they don't care. So, you know, but you know, I don't know what else I can say about it all. Uh, just that there's more to this than this road. There's, there's people in the lower end of the valley that are going to be affected by this. Uh, you know, the green space up there is beautiful up there. What are you going to follow it for? You know, that close that is. Go back. But the further you go back, the longer Court Rio Road becomes, the, going to the more dust is going to be created if the road's not paved. So, at the end of the day, it's all about the money, but there's more to life than money. We all got to live in this neighborhood, in this town, and we all got to be happy. You know, and that's your job. Make us happy. <laughs> 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 Hi, I'm Melissa Yetman, and I guess my big comment or question is really about the monies that we have secured. It's a great thing that we do see investment from the provincial, federal government, wherever the money came from. If, let's just say, just out of curiosity, that this plan was maybe put on pause for a temporary, does, does that mean we lose our money? Probably. The security of the money. And so this money was allocated for that specifically, so no upgrades at all to Kelland? Oh, no, no, it's two projects. Two projects separate yes. with different three, three, allocation three, three. of monies. Yeah, it's, it's cost share between the, third, the three levels of government. Yeah. 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 So that's, I guess, unknown if we would, if it would still be secured. Practice, no, it probably would not be. I asked the town engineer that earlier before the meeting started. Randy, you could probably answer that. Yeah, there's times on that limitations. Yeah, there's a limitation on how, when you when you have you you probably have to. You might have two to three years to have it completed. If this was delayed another year, there should not be an issue. But after a period of, it could be three, I, I'm not sure. I wasn't <coughs> expecting that it would be delayed because the intention of council was, you know, we have the money, now let's get the work done. Right. Yeah. And, and the intent was to try to move on it this year. There's um, a lot of paving projects that are potentially going to take place this year anyway, and we get better bang for a dollar as well. Yeah, so. that's right. Yeah. So you get better prices. We're going to have competitive prices more than one contractor bidding as in past years compared to past years when we only had one contractor bidding so hopefully we get better competitive prices and a more economical project so thanks 
just had, had just have one section of Kellen Drive that was upgraded a couple of years ago. And that was that was well over a million dollars from a farmer. And there was no competition on that. We had to take what we were providing. <coughs> I got patrolling my volunteer hat, no? Yeah, I was wondering how it was going to affect the zoning district. You must have been just alluded to uh, avoiding the court real road. Um, everybody knows there's a screw trail that goes down here. That just barely fits there not right now. Mm -hmm. uh, right on the side of the uh, court wheel. And we cross over court wheel and go on down and cross over by uh, the Golden Wood Lake. So if you're going to look at widening out Mud Lake Road, uh, I don't need the trail paid. But I'm going to need to some, some trees cut and more nook in the areas and some maybe some signage I got, but we're going to need some help to make sure the trail stays All right. I'm sure we'll be in touch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that raises a good point. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Wolf up the line first. Yeah. 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 It raises a good point, and I never thought of it. The snow trail is right there. Right there on Court Wheel Road. You almost can't widen Court Wheel Road. You can't expand Court Wheel Road. I don't. This is going to be tight. Real tight. Unless she starts cutting. So, you know, it's interesting. It moves it in. Definitely. Yeah, right. move it Definitely. in. Right. You know? On the opposite side of the road, of course, on yeah. the left hand side going down, but to see the raise we're finding every time. More money. So you know, think about when you sit down, think about putting a pause on this like the 87 pause for a while. You know, it's only part of the project. Then you got to you end down you're disrupting lifestyle of everybody in the lower end of the valley that uses that trail. Everybody. From Hamilton River Road to lower end of Hamilton River Road right on up through, right? So you know, it's a lot of things, but... We got one. Uh, wood on Port Real. Uh, <laughs> but about three years ago, we put in a letter asking for a fence to block some of the sound. Uh, we wish we had a 30 meter buffer. We're uh, just going to make do with what we have. Reduced traffic is better. It's better than it was, but it, it's still... Uh, it's not, it's way more than four or five trucks a week, I know that much. So, uh, yeah, so I, I, you're going to want 60 meters. <laughs> Speaking from experience, yeah. <laughs> well, if there's no more, I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. Very much appreciate it. We will be in touch, but I think the most effective way, what works for you guys, like and what works for us, the quickest way and, 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 and the most effective way, maybe through email. And if anyone wants to leave their email address so we can send out uh, updates uh, as we as we get them, does that that work for everybody here? There is yeah. a uh, just by the door there on the podium. There's a sign up sheet for those that haven't done so. If you want to leave your number, your name, and number, and email address, so that they may or may not. So we, can, we can make sure we're giving, giving you the information as quick as possible. My card is also there if you want to get any more input or any more questions regarding that. And I want to thank you for yeah. You can email me your address as well. My card Yeah, there. take if you want to take Wales' card. Wales' cards are there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you.
be no money, no cash for putting trees. Yeah. Robbing is just can we take that? I'll go ahead. Oh. What do you need, a neighbor? <laughs> yeah, you need to move back. Move it back. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead. No, no, no. 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 So I've got one of these over. Where's the bridge bridge? Yes, he's not in the area. the bridge went in? No. No, no, no. 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 Well, 